Um, in this video, we're going to be talking about creating DNet rules, uh, destination network address translation, uh, allowing traffic from uh, the internet uh, to for for uh, in our example web server. So as you can see in this diagram, we got the internet traffic coming to a Sophos firewall on port two. Uh, so this is the incoming internet, and uh, in our example, we have a switch connected to port three that uh, it's assigned a, a network 192.168.110.0 subnet, and uh, all the other machines are connected to this network. And our web server is located at 192.168.110.51, and we're gonna be uh, also. Uh, forwarding port 80 and 22. So DNet will allow us to open port on the firewall and route the traffic from the internet to the web server. So uh, there are two ways of doing that in the uh, Sophos firewall. The simplest and the easiest way, actually, if you have a straight uh, ports, meaning that if you're forwarding port 80, 443, to exactly same ports on your local network, the easiest way is to do uh, DNet uh, assistant over here, server access assistant. Uh, so let's go and uh, see how we're gonna do that. But first, uh, what I would like to do is just to show you guys if you go to network, in my example, I have port 2, which is my internet. It says WAN over here. And uh, the IP I'm getting, because I'm behind another router, so I'm getting a, um, a local LAN IP, but uh, it would be your public IP in here. On port 3, I have created a, a network and subnet 192.168.110. So as you can see, port 3, that's where my server is connected. Um, and I'm actually connected on the outside of the firewall. So uh, I'm going to be coming in uh, as I would uh, from the internet to access the uh, web server. So um, if I wanted to access the server now, 192.168.110.51, uh, then as you can see, nothing is opening up it's just gonna time out all right so uh this is timing out so let's go and uh, check the other settings so first thing we're gonna need to do go to uh oh by the way uh i also created a zone separate zone for web server i called it web server as you can see and uh when i named it web server i allowed dns and ping and I assigned it to port 3 because the port 3 is the uh, network port where uh, the web server is uh, set up. All right, so we're just going to use this web server uh, zone in our firewall rules. All right, so uh, the next thing we got to go to host and services. And uh, we have to create the uh, host uh, for the server. So we're going to call this web server. Web server. And we're gonna give it an IP, 192.168, uh, my clumsy fingers, uh, 110, and the IP was 51. Okay, we're gonna save that. So our web server is added uh, to the list of IP hosts. Uh, now, if you um, need ports you can check them over here i'm going to be using http so i can uh, type in http uh, all right so we got uh, these ports also um we can um, uh and i'm gonna use ssh uh it's also uh, in here so basically uh um you can scroll down and uh, check if you have the ports that you need for your web servers. If you don't, then you simply click add and you name it custom port. Uh, let's say, I don't know, uh, 20 
2022 then you would have to enter 2022 and save that and you will have a custom port and you can add as many ports as you want okay um all right so uh let's go back to the uh rules and policies and now uh, we're gonna use in the first scenario we're gonna use a wizard so we're gonna select add firewall rule server as, uh, access assistant dnet okay so it's asking us for the ip so that's where we created the web server so we're gonna select the web server this wizard is pretty nice and uh, helps with a lot of problems however if we're gonna do more events routing them we're gonna use manual way which will be in, in the second part of this video uh, the public IP, so we're going to use port 2 because port, uh, port 2 is where the internet is coming from. All right, now services. Uh, since um, we need HTTP and uh, we need SSH. And if you want to be able to ping ICMP. Um, all right, we're gonna hit next. External source and uh, networks and devices. Uh, so yeah, we can choose any over here. That means that anybody can access our server. Um, and then you have a summary page. Everything looks good. We're gonna hit save and finish. That will create a firewall rule and NAT rules and we'll go over real quickly. Uh, assistance also adds a name DNAT uh, so it creates um, a, a rule and uh, in its own way but uh, I like to name it in my own way so we'll get over this. Alright so as you can see, as you can see, the uh, DNet to web server was created. That's what it's called. Uh, we also have to enable lock firewall traffic because it's not enabled by default. Um, and uh, everything else was added over here. Now, this is done. And if we go to net rules, we get also a DNet. Uh, to web server, we also got loopback and reflective. Uh, so DNet, if you look, uh, we have these rules created for us. Uh, the web server is, is built and customized over here, added to a destination. So as you can see, 192.168.1051051 was added. All right, so uh, basically this is uh, if you have st straight ports, you know, HTTP, ICMP, and SSH. And they're going to be translated to identical ports. So AD is going to the AD on the server. Uh, SSH is going to uh, port 22 on this uh, server, which is SSH. Uh, so in that case, we don't have to do anything else. We all set. So this is the first part of doing the, uh, the NAT rules. Okay. Uh, so let's clean up this stuff. All right. Oh, by the way, I can test it before I actually do this. So if I type in, just gonna type in the 192.168.1.151, uh, which is the external IP. So we got access to our web server. So I'm accessing this port uh, 80, uh, from outside and if I typed in my public IP that's what I uh, would get redirected to and uh, as you can see I got access to my server all right so let's go back and uh, delete all these rules okay we're gonna go to firewall rules and delete the firewall rule Just when you uh, create a new network and subnet, and you're gonna have um, computers and servers behind it, make sure you create a firewall rule 
to allow that network uh, to uh, access to the internet. Okay, so that will be the first thing you have to do. So, uh, as you can see, I called it web server to WAN. So, if you look at it, uh, I'm accepting from my web server zone to any uh, any uh, uh, source and devices. Destination is WAN and uh, destination networks any and services any. I'm allowing all traffic from uh, my local LAN to the internet, any traffic. That rule is only required if you have any other computers that need to access the internet on the same LAN. For the server itself, you don't need that rule at all. All right, the next thing we do is uh, we're gonna create the manual DNet rule. Uh, so first called that uh, decoupled uh, DNet rule. Uh, so first we're gonna create the firewall rule. And we're gonna call this web server. We're gonna accept, we're gonna like the traffic, we're gonna put it at the top. And we're gonna click none over here, all right. So source zone, okay, so where the traffic is coming from all right, so we're just coming from the internet. So it's a web two port. Um, we're gonna leave source network and devices as any, because we're allowing anybody to come into our uh, server. Um, if you let's say one only U.S., you would add U.S. Uh, country uh, in here, and then only U.S. would be allowed to the server. Um, uh, in destination, we gotta choose our zone for the web server and as we scroll down uh, we have that named web server which I showed you at the very beginning of the video so we select that that's where the destination so coming in from the internet it's gonna go to that uh, uh, destination zone and uh, yeah destination network uh, we're just gonna choose the incoming port 2 from the internet uh, that's where the traffic is gonna go to. So we're gonna choose port two because it's our port two. Because this is our WAN port. So we allowing the traffic now. Here is where the fun begins. Uh, if you're not certain about ports, what kind of ports you're gonna need, you can leave it as any. That will allow any uh, ports to go to you firewall of course I mean to you uh, through the firewall to the web server uh, of course um, uh, you have to create the net rules for that too um, now uh, what happens in our case I'm, I'm gonna just restrict it to two ports because um, actually three ports because I want only these ports to be exposed so I'm gonna delete any and choose HTTP apply SSH apply and I want to be able to ping ICMP apply. All right. So these are the only rules that I will allow through the firewall. Anything else will be bounced back. All right. We're just gonna. Uh, hit the save over here. Okay, so now we're going to go to uh, net rules. And we're going to hit add net rule new net rule okay we're gonna call this web server dnet all right uh, we're gonna put it at the top okay it's gonna come in from any any source we're gonna allow any source to come in uh destination uh, uh destination will be port this is our internet port so if the traffic comes on port 2 um, and 
and uh, what we're gonna say if the traffic comes on port 2 uh, where we want to redirect this uh, traffic this is where we enter our uh, destination uh, IP uh, so that will be this web server so I'm gonna look for web server and I already created an IP hosts so it's 192.168.110.151 uh, uh, and what kind of uh, ports again if you're not certain you can leave it any uh, but we're gonna be actually allowing only three ports again HTTP SSH so if you know the ports you can uh, um, they also saying that if you have uh, a lot of uh, ports uh, it's easier to create separate net rules for each of them so it's easier to troubleshoot um, but in our example we're just gonna put this in one group um, and I see MP all right and destination of these uh, services is gonna be original meaning that they will match 80 it's gonna go to 80 uh, this is gonna go to uh, its port and SSH is gonna go to 22 so um, yeah this is uh, this is what we're gonna do now inbound traffic in here we have to choose the uh, when port again uh, so port 2 port 2 this is the inbound uh, interface we're gonna hit port 2 now outbound we're just gonna leave it as any um, and that's it that's uh, what the NAT rule looks like we're gonna save okay so now we should have our uh, website working again so I'm just gonna go to google.com and uh, from here we're just gonna go again to our uh, public address 92168.1.51 I'm gonna use port 80 so I'm just gonna type in HTTP in front of it HTTP on forward slash forward slash hit enter and here we go we got access to our uh, web server on port 80 okay so everything is working um, if you go to the firewall rule you should see uh, traffic in here and we got uh, some bytes in here that means that the traffic is incoming um, and if you go to naturals yeah we also have usage here so we got one traffic coming into a web server all right so this is it uh, for uh, doing the DNAT role on Sophos XG thank you